with one of his favourite winter warmers. Um, it's just arrived in front of us. I might have already had a bit of a taste. <laughs> I'm going it's in amazing. now. It's amazing. What are you making? <laughs> I'm making a duck leg ragu today. Holy so, like moly. you said, winter warmer, perfect thing for these colder months, snuggling up underneath a blanket, and it's so easy to make. It doesn't sound it. It sounds posh. It like, does. if I went to someone's house and they were like, my little duck leg ragu, I'd be like, oh, you know what you're doing. That's why it's so good. Yeah. Because you can impress. Exactly. Maybe for the family, maybe for a day, or just treat yourself. Yeah. Duck leg ragu, it sounds fancy, but it's so easy. I've got my duck legs in here. Mm -hmm. How many? Four. Right. Browning them off, getting some nice colour and flavour on them. They're done. Mm -hmm. um, we're not cooking them the whole way through on the hob. We're literally just getting colour on them. So I'm going to take these out. So can you go to the butchers and just buy the duck legs? Yeah, exactly. You can, you can get duck legs in supermarkets as well. Um, this recipe takes the skin off them. Mm -hmm. Duck uh, skin is really, really fatty. And if you're cooking, like, say, a breast, you need to render it for a really long time. Plus, at the end of this, we're going to be shredding this to mm -hmm. make a sauce. So I don't yeah. really want any skin in there. Yeah. So it just makes it way easier just to, if you're getting them from the butcher, ask for the skin removed from the duck leg. Legs. Buy it from the supermarket, do it yourself. OK. Um, so, actually, the first thing to do before that veg goes in is, because we've got that colour in there, going to deglaze this pan with some white wine just to lift all of that off the surface. Mm -hmm. So that's going to go in there. That's just one glass of white wine. And then we've got a nice little mirepoix here. That's just a fancy word for carrot, celery, onion. Ooh, what's it called? A mirepoix? Mi mi mirepoix. It's French and mirepoix. I can't pronounce it properly. Mirepoix. Yeah, I think, yeah. I've heard of sofrito, which is the Italian one. Yeah. Mirepoix. Basically mirepoix. Same. Mm -hmm. We're probably definitely saying that wrong. I've never heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> no, a so, that's all gone in. We're just going to let this um, sweat for a little bit with the heat on. There we go. Um, just to soften. We're yeah. going to get those cherry tomatoes to blister. They're going to be like the base of the sauce and just reduce a little bit. So I'm going to give that like a little mix. And when they start to soften up, basically, I mean, it's so easy. Everything just goes into one pot. Right. So I've got some chopped tomatoes here, a little bit of tomato paste to thicken, some yeah. oregano, which I love. I think mm -hmm. it goes really well with this. And then I've got some capers and olives. Mm -hmm. And what's great is a lot of people say, and I think I mentioned it earlier, people, I think, refrain from eating duck, especially, like, you know, they think it's quite fatty, quite rich. Mm. If you've, like, confit a leg, it, it is very rich. There's a lot going on there. Yeah. But what's great about this dish is that you've got loads of acidity in the tomato, and you've got the acidity in those brined olives and capers as well. So actually, all of the fat that you're getting in the duck leg is really well balanced mm -hmm. by that acidity that comes with the rest of the stuff in here. It, yeah. um, that is so true when you eat it, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. It's actually almost like quite a light ragu, weirdly. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And right. I wasn't expecting that. And it just means that you can eat way too much of it, which is what I like to do. Danger. So that all goes in here. Super important. I don't know if you remember a few months ago, I made a... Um, a chicken cacciatore. Yeah. Oh, I got yeah. loads of really lovely feedback from it, but some people at home were saying, oh, it was a little bit watery. A big tip for long cooks in the oven is that you need to make sure you bring it back up to the boil on the hob before it goes into the oven. Otherwise, it will never reach that temperature. Oh. So everything's going in here. Got my herbs in there, got my olives, got capers, give that all a bit of a mix up. Now, what they'll be able to see at home, this is important because I have to do it quickly, Leave it on the hob for longer than this. Okay. Let it bubble, let it reduce a little bit, then duck legs back in and into the oven. But I'm just okay. going to show you everything goes in, duck legs go back in. And this is when they cook through. And this is when they cook through. Mm -hmm. And you cook them, I mean, we'll be cooking them for an hour and a half at 160 degrees. And because it's the leg, is it a bit like when you get like chicken thighs? No matter if you cook them, like, they're not going to go dry like the breast, exactly. they're going to just be. Because they're just super high in fat. Yeah. They've just got that fat and like the meat falls apart. It's yeah. probably that long cook. More forgiving. Breaks it down, exactly. Like you'd never do this with duck breast. Yeah. Mm -mm. You know, but legs just work absolutely perfectly. So what I'll do, everything just goes on top like that. And then I'll pop the lid on and just leave a little crack in it because we want it to reduce. Mm -hmm. We don't want it to be, you know, we don't want it to actually be really watery. So that will go into the oven, 160 for an hour and a half. Careful, That's quite you. Hot. So be careful at Gravity home when you're down. picking it up. There's yeah, one got, here behind the bread one here and one here. Perfect. So, and that goes in. That goes See, that's in. what you need. Once you've got one of those big pots oh. that goes from hob to oven, you don't want anything with a plastic handle. You need to have a proper... Oh, definitely, yeah. A nice, mm. like, cast iron, you know, stir. And then you pan. can plonk it straight on the table as well. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's, like, so versatile. They've, you know, saved my life a bunch of times. Yeah. But, anyway. Sorry. I'm on to the next. Dropping. So, what you'd get is this. Afterwards, that's been cooking for an hour and a half at 160. Yeah. And I've taken the duck legs out. Yeah. Where can I pop them? I'll pop them here. And I just want to show you quickly 
how soft they are. So I've already got some shredded here and I've got two forks. This is like the Chinese, isn't it? This is like when you get the shredded, the old things. Take them out and you literally just with your fork, look at that, look, just falls apart with your forks. Pull it off the bone, give it a little wipe. So have you fingers. allowed for a leg per person? I suppose so, yeah, actually. I sort of just, you know, because you're not serving them as one leg per person, but I guess, you know, proportions-wise, mm. it does work out like that as a sauce. So that all will go in there. I'm going to pop that bone on there. This can go in here. And now this is my favourite part. You just mix it so vigorously that all of the lovely chunks of duck that you've got just, like, fall apart and start to become really fine. You can probably see it it's in so the bowls nice. that you have. It's so, so, so fine and pulled apart. And you can see it in here. You just coat it in this delicious tomato sauce. Now, at home, remember, we haven't put any salt in. Use your senses, trust yourself, season it. Bit of black pepper, a bit of salt will go in there. Taste it, make sure it's good. I know that this one is fine. And then, a little bit of pasta. This is how I like to serve it. But actually, to be fair, when I'm cooking it, got a bit left over, have it with some bread the next day mm. as lunch. Super versatile. It's and really good, and with the olives as well, like that, Acidity. Mm. That, well, an olive's quite as As acidic. Acidic, yeah. Like, you know what I mean. You know what <laughs> I mean. A little bit of parsley. I tried to sound there. quite fancy then, and it backfired. I, I thought it worked. The acidity. Did it? I thought I should have kept going. I nearly pulled it off. <laughs> right, right. There's my big spoon. Right, we're nearly there. We're nearly there. Got a big spoon here, and then I'll just serve it up. Finish it with a bit of parmesan. Yummy. And that's it. Beautiful. Look at Both that. It is clever. absolutely delicious. The flavour is. Um, I mean, if you did that with chicken, you would not get that, that wonderful, no. rich flavour. Uh -uh. Right. I think it's perfect for the season we're in. Yeah. Thank you. Mm. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thanks, Joseph. Gorgeous. Well, uh, for details of today's recipe and more delicious ideas from our chefs, download the free This Morning app.